So up till now we've been using just the command line. Now we're going to learn how to write a real program in FreeMat or MATLAB. We do that by creating what's called a script file. We create a new, we open a new file, and this is going to allow us to save a whole bunch of commands to run over and over again and tweak them. For example, if we were over here and we said, oh, R equals 0 0.5, right? And x equals 10, and we want to take x equals x times r, x equals x times r, x equals x times r. So we want to multiply this successively. This could get kind of tedious, right? Let's say I wanted to do it a hundred times, you know. Now we could obviously write it as x equals x times r to the 100th. But I want to show how you can take a bunch of commands and put them in a, into a program and then make this more useful, perhaps. So the first thing you do when you create a program is you're going to put in comments at the top. Comments are ignored by the compiler. They're there to give information to the program and make it easier to understand. So we're going to call this program sample script file written by Mr. King on August 27, 2018. You're going to put those you're going to put that at the top of all of your programs. You'll have a the name of the program, your name and the date. We're also going to put a CLC command to clear the screen. A clear all to get rid of any variables that are outstanding over here. We'll get rid of them when we run the program and a close all, which will close any open windows in the program, like a graph that might already be open. So let's call this sample script file. I actually already had one in there, so I have to replace it, but I save this in a folder. Now if I run this, it's not going to do anything except it's going to clear out those variables and clear the screen because those things are there. But now let's go over here and see what we were doing. We say x equals 10 and r equals 0 0.5. Now if I run this, I get x equals 10 and r equals 0 0.5 over here. If I put these semicolons after it, and those of you who program in Java know every line ends with a semicolon, but you don't have to in MATLAB. If I save this and now I run it again, nothing happens, but if you look down here, it stored x and r with the correct values. The semicolon in MATLAB or FreeMAT tells the computer do that action but suppress the output. Again, if I take this out just for this one, I'll run it and it'll say r equals 0 0.5. It'll tell me what it's done. We don't want to do that. Let's say I want to know how many times we need to multiply by 0 0.5 in order to get below a certain limit. Let's call the limit 0.0001. All right. Well, here's something you can do in a programming language, and this is a way, one way to do it in MATLAB or FreeMAT is let's do a loop. So I'm going to set num steps equal to 20. Then I'm going to make a loop, a for loop here that says i equals one. So we're going to start i as one. We're going to go up by ones, and we're going to go up until we get to num steps. And then, inside here, we're going to do x equals x times r, and display x. And then we say end. And end tells it the loop to stop. So this loop, right now, num steps is 20. We're going to start at 1 and go up to 20 by 1. So this is going to run 20 times. Each time, this code is going to happen. It's going to say x equals x times r. And then it's going to display x. Because there's semicolons here, it won't it'll only display the x because of this display. So if we run this, we get 5, 2.5, right? 
So that's one way to run a loop. But we wanted to know how many steps it would take to get below that limit. So what if we tried something else? What if we say, let's reset x to be 10. We already know that r is 0.5. What if I tried a different kind of loop? While x is greater than the limit, x equals x times r, display x, and end. And a while loop is different. The for loop is something you use when you know how many steps you want to make. A while loop just says keep going while that statement is true. So let's run this this way. All right. So it runs until we get to here. And then it stops. So this one went a few steps past. So we could count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. But if we were trying to do something really big, why would we want to count it? So let's do something a little different here. First, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you a tool comment region. All right? That's going to comment this whole block of code out because we're not going to use it now. Then I'm going to say here count equals zero. And each time we multiply, I'm going to say count equals count plus one. Then after the loop, I'm going to display count. And this shows us it took 17 steps to get below the limit that we had set. And that is a program in MATLAB.